Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Pena Knives Front Flipper Trapper, but this is the uh, X-Series, the Pena X-Series Front Flipper Trapper. I should get that order correct. So, the uh, Enrique Pena uh, makes a custom Front Flipper Trapper that is uh, kind of combining some of the elements from the traditional knife world or traditional knives and uh, modern knives, right? And, uh, you know, I think from, from what I understand, um, you know, people just went completely crazy for it. And I looked at this and I thought, man, that's really cool. Here recently I've gotten into a little bit. I've, I've crept into the interesting, uh, or, or what I consider to be the interesting parts of the traditional knife world. Uh, uh, Great Eastern Color Knives, specifically the number 15. Really, really interested in some of those little slip joints I like. Uh, you know, trappers, some some lockbacks, you know, uh, other knives in, in the same caliber, more the traditional knife world. But I love the idea of combining just the elements that I've come to know and love personally being, you know, basically one-handed manipulation, you know, and on top of that, uh, modern materials, bearings, things like that, stuff that uh, we like in the modern knife world. So that was a really interesting knife, but it was a very expensive knife. So I, I guess uh, Enrique Pena teamed up with Riot and decided to make a production variant of this because the custom variants come in at about 800 dollars $800, $850, something like that. Really expensive. Uh, so this is a production variant that is at this time, I don't believe available. I, understandably, I think these sold out pretty quickly. Um, but uh, they ran about $275, something like that, which is really, really cool. So it made this a version of the knife that was much more affordable despite at the moment not being currently available. And I have no idea if we'll see more of these come back. I sure hope we do. I, I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's essentially the uh, idea here. This knife was sent to me by Mr. Nick Shabazz himself. Thank you so much, Nick Shabazz. I don't know how you could, you know, <laughs> if by some odd chance you stumbled across my channel before Nick, uh, go subscribe to Nick Shabazz. Um, Nick uh, was a, a gigantic influence on this channel. I don't know if you guys can tell, um, but uh, yeah, uh, absolutely wonderful person, and he's been very friendly uh, to my channel and, and me. Anyways, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. There's my tape measure. Uh, overall length on the Pena X Series front flipper trapper coming in at six and a half. Is it six and a half? Yeah, it's six and a half inches overall. Blade length coming in at two point seven five. Cutting edge coming in at 2.6, uh, 2 yeah, 2.6 inches. So that's nice. That makes it a nice legal size in a lot of places. Uh, obviously not everywhere, and it is still a locking knife, but if you're only limited, you know, by blade length, then this is something that's going to make you happy. Let's go ahead and get a, I'm sorry, uh, do a size comparison up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see here, this is, you know, this is a smaller knife. I mean, obviously, intentionally a smaller knife. It's meant to be something that's more easily carried in the pocket um, than a knife that is much bigger. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> it's a smaller knife. <laughs> it's like setting up the dialogue for a long explanation to justify it. It just is what it is. Up against the PM2. PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at eight inches overall, and last but not least, actually not last, uh, let's put it up against the Spyderco Para 3, Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Not too much, not crazy shorter than the Para 3, and cutting edge, cutting edge is actually, yeah, the Trapper is a, <laughs> I think the Trapper has a little bit more of a uh, cutting edge there. Let's put it up against the uh, my smallest knife that I carry regularly. This is the uh, Victorinox Cadet. The Cadet's coming in, I think, five and three quarters, maybe. Yeah, five and three quarter inches overall, so there you go. Uh, how is the action on this guy? Well, anybody who's handled a Riot, and Riot manufactures knives out of China, that's how they got the, the price down uh, to where it is while maintaining the excellent level of fit and finish. Excuse me. Um, but uh, uh, the action on this guy is wonderful. 
This is a smaller knife with a, a thin blade stock. Not a lot of mass to the blade, but it is a front flipper. That's the um, that's the big that's the kicker there. <laughs> you don't see a lot of front. I mean, like we're seeing more and more and more front flippers in today's modern knife world, but not combined like this. This knife is a it's not a liner lock like the uh, custom. It's a what I would call a sub frame lock, which is that's pretty nice. There's a lot of little nice things about this knife. There's a lot of little tiny details that I find uh, very uh, intriguing. And, you know, so how I came to, to acquire this knife from Nick is, is a couple of times he had uh, said, hey, you know, I've got a couple of things that you might be interested in checking out. And twice in a row, um, and he was just being friendly, you know, twice in a row, he offered up things that were already being sent by other people. And, um, um, you know, considering how friendly he had been to the channel in the past, I really wanted to uh, have a knife, you know, come uh, my way from him so that I could say thank you to him on the channel again. Um, but it just, it didn't work out two times in a row. And finally, we uh, we talked a little bit on Instagram and he listed off um, some knives that uh, uh, that he had in his possession. And when he, he mentioned this one, I was like, yes, absolutely. That is very interesting. I like kind of stepping outside of the box. You guys see a lot of the same stuff on my channel. And uh, this is something that you don't normally see or a style of knife that you don't normally see. Truthfully, it's a style of knife that you really don't see hardly anywhere in the knife world. But in any case, I was like, yes, please. I would very much like to look at that because it is a front flipper running on bearings that has a ton of elements from the traditional or, um, yeah, the traditional knife world. Um, so anyways, uh, what I'm saying there is the action is incredible despite the fact that the knife is a small, fairly thin blade um, and that, you know, I've always said this about front flippers. Uh, front flippers that don't have a lot of room on the handle to brace because it's an unorthodox means of deployment versus what we're all used to, right? So you kind of have to figure out, okay, so I'm gonna go here. I'm not flipping. So you're having to adjust your hand to here and get used to this, this you know, engagement, I guess. Then you're having to put pressure on this area up here in a properly tuned front flipper, there's going to be enough of a detent to allow you to build up pressure the right way with your thumb. And then you just kind of have to keep messing with it until you figure out, okay, it's like that. And this, you know, despite me not having handled a ton of front flippers, this one was super easy to figure out. And uh, the reason I like, you know, both the idea of the custom and this production variant is because it's not an exposed frame lock. If they had done an exposed frame lock on this, it would have been the same issue that I had with the Feist. And the Feist, the Kaiser Feist is still a good front flipper, but it's such a narrow frame. There's not a lot of room for you to put your hands on the frame and at the same time not put pressure on that lock bar. Because the lock bar is for the most part not exposed in this design, you can kind of just put your hands wherever you want. And you're not going to be putting pressure on that, uh, that uh, sub frame lock, which makes it really easy, very comfortable to deploy. A lot of times with small knives, fidget factor kind of goes out the window. And general accessibility and deployment go out the window because it's just, you know, it's small. You got to, you know, especially if you've got, I'm, I don't have huge hands, but if you really have big hands, it makes it that much harder to manipulate. But this is so friendly. Uh, Enrique Pena's uh, design philosophy, you know, the style of this knife, and then it's uh, the, the overall execution by Ria. It's just a perfect combination of elements. Um, and it's just, <laughs> it's just really good. Very, very cool. The action is wonderful. I have no complaints about that. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3, uh, or thickness, I guess. It is a little bit thicker. You have some heavy chamfering, and we've got some contouring going on. I always talk about, you know, I don't care so much if it's a little bit thicker, as long as the thickness is meaningful, right? And in the case of this little knife, I kind of appreciate that uh, it fills out the hand a little bit more than it would if it were just kind of, you know, flat and thin. Um, but uh, that's really kind of trivial because this, the overall object is just not a big object. It's not a cumbersome object at all. You can see there, tilting slightly because of the pocket clip up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3 two knives that have unquestionably awkward carry profiles that nobody ever seems to complain about. Uh, it's a winner. It's uh, shorter than both of them and it's nowhere near as tall. In fact, I think it's less than half the height of a Spyderco PM2, maybe right at half the height of a Spyderco PM2. We are looking at titanium and in this case, uh, micarta, a brown micarta. Now these come in, in three different forms. They come in uh, the, I think it's like a green micarta, the, the, the tan micarta, and maybe they're different. Maybe they call them tan or maybe they call them can't, whatever. The, to me, it's brown, uh, green, and um, 
uh, carbon fiber. And they're all attractive. The interesting, so normally I'm not a big fan of anything that's brown or earthy. It's just not my thing. But on a traditional, right, um, you know, and I'm not a big fan of wood. I'm not a big fan of uh, that kind of stuff. But I do like micarta, and micarta has a lot of what I want from a modern material, but it looks like something that belongs, or it can give an aesthetic, right, an aged or sort of antique uh, aesthetic to a knife that, um, you know, the design does well with that, right? And this is a perfect example of that, right? If you want the more modern look, go with the carbon fiber. It almost changes the entire nature of the knife. If you want the more old school, more classy look, right, yeah, go with the micarta. Uh, they're all really, really cool. Uh, but anyways, we've got a micarta scale on top of a titanium frame. And then we've got, I'd call it, I mean, it's its the frame. So I don't know if we call it a bolster or whatever. Um, and then we have a uh, an M390 blade. The custom, I believe, is CPM154, which you guys know is my favorite user steel for more of a medium-sized knife. When you get down to a really small knife, the nice thing is, is some of those steels that boast, you know, massive edge retention and not a lot of excess toughness, I think are great for knives like this because why do you need the excess toughness, right? What are you going to be put? This is more of an EDC knife. I'm not going to be putting this thing through anything crazy. So I think M390 is super appropriate. Man, my allergies are just going crazy today. Blade stock thickness on this guy coming in at 100. So well, it's probably about 150,000. So nice and thin on the blade stock. That's to be expected. And because the item itself is just not a big item, uh, weight on this guy is coming in at 2.22 ounces, which is awesome. That's well under the ounce and inch mark, and it's probably, I mean, it's, it's, it's what you guys expected, most likely. Uh, this is going to be an easy knife to carry in just about anything, and because of, despite, you know, a lot of people are like, I can't carry anything, you know, that's over two ounces because I wear athletic shorts every day. Even if you wear athletic shorts every day, this, this item is so small and, you know, it's it's so compact and it's such a friendly profile. Uh, it really doesn't matter what the heck you're wearing. If you wear the tightest pants known to man, okay, <laughs> and you need the mini bug out or you need one of those credit card knives, right? Um, but uh, for 99.9% .9 of us, all right, and, and those of us who can carry locking knives, um, yeah, this is just going to be a super easy knife to carry. Let's go ahead and do... The hardware check, we get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver, two items that are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every video. Just pull up in the store and look for knife maintenance. You'll notice that these are labeled. <laughs> That's not because of me. That's because of a very uh, concerned viewer. Actually, I, I'm, I, I've seen him on Instagram before. Thank at KillerB777, who sent me a wonderful letter. Basically, uh, summarizing the letter, he was like, I love your channel, but it just drives me crazy that your bits aren't labeled. So I made you, <laughs> made you some labels. Now, I cut these out. So that's why they look all wonky. Thank you so much uh, at KillerB777 for doing that. That's really nice. So you can thank him uh, for uh, the bits finally being labeled. The uh, pivot on this guy, I'm going to guess, is a T10? Um, whoops, what is wrong? Oh, I slid them over. Oh my gosh. So even with labeled bits, there we go. I slid them over. I'm so sorry. Even with labeled bits, guys, I still screw up. Oh my gosh. What an epic fail for the very first uh, time showing my bits being labeled. Anyways, T10 for the love of all things that are good. Um, let's go ahead and check that pivot there. Uh, pivot size is T10. And on this side, it is T10. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know if it's a free spinning pivot. I know the custom was a free spinning pivot. Worst case scenario, you just need two drivers, right? And that sucks to have to go buy extra stuff, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Is the, are the, the overlay screws T10 as well? Um, let's put that T10 back in here and check. The overlay heads look pretty big. I'll just, I'm, I'm going to check the T10. No, no, those are probably going to be T8. I know this segment doesn't need to be as long as it is, but it just is because I'm kind of a fumbly person. Uh, let's try the T8 real quick, just so everybody knows 100% for sure. Yeah, T8. That's great. Even the lock bar stabilizer screw is T8, and the pocket clip screws are also, if I can get that in there, are also 
uh, T8. That's wonderful. So if you want to take this apart, you can do that. There's nothing crazy going on here. It's pretty similar to the inside of any subframe lock or frame lock or liner lock, right? Fairly minimal hardware considering the design. The two screws for the overlay, there's probably a screw underneath holding in the backspacer, which I don't know what size the head is. But yeah, the important thing is, is that the bit heads or the fastener heads are large, so you're less likely to strip them, either by the tool or the bit head, and it should be pretty easy to take apart, so that's wonderful. Let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy here. So what we're looking at is sort of a pill-shaped knife, nice uh, chamfering all the way around. Corners are knocked down. The aesthetic that they achieve is just wonderful. This is just really good looking, whether it's laying like this, whether it's laying like this, right? It's open. It's just nice. That's a nice looking knife. And uh, it's also a non-threatening looking knife. So this is a great office carry knife. This is a great church knife, uh, cocktail party knife, uh, fancy occasion, whatever. This is a knife that is not super aggressive, right? Uh, no, I mean, it, you're not going to be the most popular guy at the party if nobody knows you and you whip out a cold steel Espada XL to open up a bag of pretzels, right? I'm kidding, but seriously, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. This, if you're going to be that guy who pulls out a knife in front of a, a large group of people that don't know you, this is much safer. It's a, a much a better way of not isolating yourself as um, a psychopath because that's i mean truth we are the we are a minority guys knife people are a minority whether we want to admit it or not um so most people just don't understand why people would carry knives right i think that's nice this is a nice classy aesthetic right it's not threatening not nearly as threatening as some other knives so that's really really cool i'm a big fan of the bolster look this is a bead blasted titanium bolster it looks really really nice um i think riot's fit and finish here is very very evident um the you know, I, I guess I, I would call that a gap, but the problem is, is that the problem with me uh, being critical here is that it's extremely uniform and I can't really feel it. I mean, just like getting as close up as I possibly can. It is pretty much exactly the same on both sides. So I guess there's a little bit of, like a microscopic amount of space between the bolster and the scale, but it's the same space all the way across and the transition from the bolster to the scale is incredibly smooth same way back here you can see on both sides it's pretty much just exactly the same thing i'd like to see it fit absolutely perfect because that's what i've come to expect from ria but it's not a deal breaker it's a minor very very minor fit and finish thing not that big of a deal and it's not going to cause any uh type of um you know, it's a drawback in terms of utility. There is nothing that's going to happen during use uh, that's going to uh, create a negative, um, a, a, no negative result as of, you know, because of this tiny, tiny little thing that I perceive as a, a minor uh, aesthetic imperfection. Wow, that was a long-winded way of saying it's not a big deal. Anyways, um, yeah, the entire thing looks great. Uh, you can see there it says Pena X series. We have a little nail nick, which I think is awesome. You know, if you don't want to do this at that cocktail party where nobody knows you're the knife guy, then just open it like this, like a traditional knife. That's wonderful. No issue there whatsoever. Very, gosh, very, very smooth. Um, the engage, a lot of people, you know, are probably wondering, is it a top flipper? So I am right-handed and I can do it with my right hand. You can top flip it for whatever reason though. <laughs> I'm not left-handed. It's easier for me to top flip it with my left hand, right? And I mean, top like index finger flip it. You can. It's not nearly, it's, this is much easier to do, right? The nice thing is, is that you can kind of pick your style. It's not one of those knives that it's like, this is kind of a weird means of deployment, but you're going to have to figure it out. Yeah, you are going to have to adapt to the front flipper or top flipper aspect of it, but you're not forced, right? You can use the nail nick. So, you're always able to deploy it uh, conveniently, and I think that's great. Taking a look at the blade, we do have a nice machine satin finished blade. It is a clip point blade with a flat that runs out about 75% the length, carrying you know a fair amount of meaningful thickness. Not a very thick knife to begin with, so I wouldn't call that a hyper durable edge, especially considering we're looking at M390. But again, what are you going to be doing with this knife where that's going to come into question, right? I think this is a... Uh, just a perfect EDC blade shape. It is nice and thin and slicey behind the edge, and it's emphasizing that M390 very, very well. There is jimping that uh, runs out to a, a very meaningful location. There is no guard for your finger, 
So if you really are gonna bear down on it, be careful, right? This is more of a knife that's, oh, you got a box open, oh, I cut through some tape. You know, it's kind of a one or two cut knife. It's not a knife that I would go out and break down a bunch of cardboard boxes with, but I think that's obvious, right? Be careful about where you put your hands. Uh, the blade is wonderful. I really, I have nothing, no complaints with the blade whatsoever. And most of the edges are knocked down. There's a couple of areas up here that are a teeny tiny little bit sharp, not that big of a deal. You can see it's catching my finger there just a little bit. Moving down to the back of the knife, you can see there there's a nice titanium backspacer um, that is contrasting well um, with the uh, micarta scales. I love that they did kind of a bead blasted, like the frame, the pocket clip, the, um, and the uh, backspacer are all kind of bead blasted tie. Then we have polished fasteners and a satin finished blade uh, up against micarta. And I think that's really, really nice. It doesn't matter if you go micarta, uh, if you go carbon fiber or, you know, well, brown micarta, green micarta, or, or carbon fiber, the contrast is all really, really great. The pocket clip, I think, is just about, just perfect for this knife. Um, I love that it comes down to kind of the little sword tip down here and it's got a little fuller. It's got two screws that go, um, you know, they're, they're vertical. It doesn't carry super duper deep, but I don't think that's really that big of a deal. This is the type of knife where if you want to carry it as your primary EDC, it'll work just fine. The retention on the clip is great. It doesn't add an insane amount of thickness to the overall profile. While it doesn't carry deep, it carries an appropriate, uh, I mean, you know, that much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket is not that big of a deal. If you want to, just take the clip off and carry it as a backup knife, right? Or the, I'm sorry, I say backup, but the knife that you carry in your back uh, rear or uh, rear right or rear left pocket, right? Like that's where I put my Victorinox Cadet. That's the nice thing. I think the, the actual custom has an option to either not have the holes milled for the pocket clip at all or to have the pocket clip attached. I think I would always opt for the pocket clip so that I've got the option, right? You take the pocket clip off, you're going to have holes on this side. I don't really care about that. But yeah, I really like the pocket clip. I also, again, really like that we've got contouring going on on these scales. That's just wonderful. I love contouring. It's going to be nice and easy to get this knife to slip over your pants given that it is a smooth contoured surface. And I love that sub frame lock. I want to see more of that because I don't like the idea of bearing, and now this is a smaller knife, but I want to see more sub frame locks than knife world in general because I hate the idea of the frame lock and the geometry being altered by how hard I am squeezing the knife during use, right? There's, I'm not interacting with that lock at all because my, my hands are for the most part completely off of it. I just really, really like that design. It has a steel lock bar insert, that is in an, you know, it itself is acting as an over travel stop and so is the uh, micarta. So that's great. Um, I, I think that's wonderful. You can see we're locking up here at about 50% for the overall tank, Man, maybe a little less, maybe about 40%. And the blade is perfectly centered, which is something that I expect from Riot. This thing is freaking cool. It's just really cool. It's just such a cool little EDC knife. I like it a lot. Uh, I mean, what what do we have here that I can complain about? Honestly, I mean, there's really not a lot here. I mean, this not this. The thing is, is I don't judge not. I mean, I have my own personal bias, but like I would never be like, well, the downside of this knife is it's small. I mean, in some cases, yes, you know, for some people that's going to be a downside, but for other people's, it's going to be a plus. For what they sought to do, I always try to think, what did the maker try to? What did the designer try to do here, and was it executed properly? Right. And in this case, they sought to bring together the elements of the traditional and modern knife world and add some cool features, some fidget factor features like the front flipper. They put bearings in it. They put M390 on it. They gave it this really, really classy, cool look. Gave you a few options whether you want to go more on the modern side, more on the traditional side in terms of micarta or carbon fiber. And then micarta or carbon fiber. I don't know how I said that. And then they had Riot build it, right? <laughs> This is great. I just, I don't know that there's anything to, to really complain about. I would have liked to have seen that little gap just all pushed all the way up there, but it's really, I mean, the fact that it's even, at least it's not wonky, right? And there's no, it's not like raised in certain areas. It's completely flush all the way around. So I really, that's just me being a very nitpicky person. Um, really, really excellent. This knife, when it is available, to my knowledge, comes in at about $275. The, the biggest problem with this knife is that right now it's not available. This is excellent. This is truly excellent. If you're looking for this, right, and you can afford, you know, the price, uh, 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 
what is the word that I'm looking for? Uh, the the um, the caliber that this knife is in, right? Of the price tier that this is in. Um, do I think that this knife is worth it? Oh, a hundred percent. I have no issue with that with that price at all. I could not remember when he sent this. You know, I was like, is this the, the X series? Is that like the mid tech? Like he's making them partially machined, partially handmade to lower the price? No. Uh, so to my surprise, this was not a three, four, five hundred dollar knife. Um, this is a $275 knife. So I was very pleasantly surprised. I think that's very appropriate for what this is. I think it's excellent. If you can get your hands on one, great. Don't overpay on the secondary market. I really hope more of these are coming back. But yeah, as far as this review goes, this is an excellent knife. And by the way, there's no blade play. No blade play. Um, you, uh, a lot of times on little knives like this, you know, I'm kind of, and initially, you know, when I got this, I thought, uh, maybe I'm feeling a little bit of blade play and I give it the tiniest little turn on this side and it turned. That doesn't mean that it's not a D shaped pivot barrel, by the way, it just, there was enough friction there that it caused this side to not turn and this turn just, and I just, just the tiniest little turn and it went, you know, perfectly, uh, solid. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So yes, I can recommend this knife. It'll be going on my most recommended knives playlist. Hope you guys were at least mildly entertained by this review. I think that's going to be it today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.